Tom Araya opened up about the state of affairs within Slayer, telling Loudwire in a 2017 interview. You know, there's a lot of things that are going on business-wise. This was something that started off as something that you want to do, and then it turned into a business and it becomes something that you have to do. Because you commit yourself, and with commitment comes responsibility. But there's a lot of things. There were a lot of things we didn't take care of when Jeff Hanman was alive. When we were initially a band there was a lot of things we didn't take care of. At a certain point we've got a manager, and then a lawyer. And there were things we still didn't take care of. And only now are we taking care of these things. So once we take all that stuff and get it taken care of, then we'll see what the future holds. Laughs, and that's stuff that's just business stuff. I guess some people want to hear that, but that's not something you want to talk about. I mean, I shouldn't be talking about it now. But that's what's going on right now. We're trying to settle businesses that should have been settled a long time ago. And that's where we're at. Jeff passed away, and that's when we found all these things were like just loose ends. And we were like what do you mean? Didn't we take care of this? We all had this frame of mind that all that was taken care of, and come to find that it wasn't. I just want to tie up all the loose ends. Then once we got that, then we can move forward. Asked on what the future holds once those business matters are sorted out, Tom replied. Dude, I didn't even know what this record, 2015's Repentless, is gonna be like when I was in the studio. I've heard the songs, I've heard the music, and then once I got in the studio we worked out the lyrics for the songs. And that's when it started going, okay, cool. And I was really concerned. It was just two of us, usually it was three of us, working together. And then you get in the studio, and it's just two. Yeah, you have the producer, Terry Dave was really really good. And you've got Paul Bostaff in there, so we're all just working together. And then slowly but surely when I started doing stuff, I was working with it and I was thinking about it, oh my god, this is starting to sound good. And then at the very end I was like, okay, this is Slayer. That's how you get from the one point to the next. You just hear music and it just, okay, great sounds good. You gotta start really feeling it, and you gotta live it. All I know is I want to put together these loose ends, and once that's done then we can move forward. Guitarist Kerry King discussed Slayer songs he's not a fan of, telling Rolling Stone. Somebody was telling me Steve Harris hates the Invaders track off 1982's The Number of the Beast. But I get it, because there's a handful of songs in our history that I'm like, goddamn, I hate that song. Like, I fucking despise desire and I hate cleanse the soul. But when invaders came up, I'm like, wow, I like invaders. And then I tried to start thinking about why he would hate it. It just sucks, I don't get it. But he's close to it, like I'm close to my songs, so there you go. You're more than welcome to your opinion, Steve. You wrote it. Desire was released on Slayer's 1998 record Diabolus and Musica, which Kerry clearly singled out as his least favorite record in the band's catalog on several occasions. Cleanse the Soul was released on 1988 South of Heaven featuring music by Hanman and lyrics by Hanman and King. Kerry previously said about the track. That's one of the black marks in our history, in my book. I just fucking think it's horrible. I hate the opening riff. It's what we call a happy riff. I can't see myself playing it. But after that, where it gets heavier, I like that section. If we ever did a medley, I'd put part of that in there. In a Guitar World issue, Kerry King discussed his relationship with his Slayer partner Jeff Hanman, and how they were never best of friends. This is what he said. Anytime we would finish a tour, Jeff, would just go home and detach, he might have lived only 45 minutes away, but unless you were part of his inner circle, it was hard to stay in touch with him. And it took me a few years to understand that. For a while I was just like, why isn't this guy calling me back? But as I got older, I just realized that that was who Jeff was. I don't think Jeff and I were ever best friends, I think we were probably the closest in the band, but never best friends. To put it in a way that everyone could understand, Jeff and I were like business partners. Was he my friend? Of course he was my friend. But we didn't really act like that. The last time I was at Jeff's house was January 2003. We went to his place to watch the Raiders in the playoffs. And it sounds horrible, but it wasn't horrible. That was just how it was. Speaking with RBA Mag, King admitted that his band does live off their history a bit, stating, We're living on our history for sure, 
but so is everyone else, yet we're the ones trying to push ourselves forward. He adds, I would say Iron Maiden and Metallica, no offense, are living on past success. Metallica has toured forever on the black record which a lot of people don't like. I actually like it. It's heavy as can be. Is it Master of Puppets? Course not, but it's a great record. Iron Maiden for me is living off their first three records. Have they made good songs since then? Yeah, but they haven't made great records. I like to think we're still making great records and as much as people come out wanting to hear Rain and Blood and Angel of Death, they also want to hear Disciple or even Implode. From there, the conversation turned to the state of the record industry. The guitarist says he no longer views album sales as a good barometer, stating, my barometer is the live show where people show up. That means people are into the music, whether the record is selling or not. They have it, they know it, and we can play it and have them sing it right back to us. That's pretty much how it shows me people are still into, regardless of sales. Do you agree with Kerry King? Are Metallica only living a past success? And are they are more or less irrelevant? Tell us your thoughts down below. During a recent interview Slayer guitarist Kerry King talked about censorship, discussing the band's recent live debut in Singapore, and being banned to play certain songs by the government due to religious beliefs He said, I think religion is just a big farce, and I think people use it as a crutch as opposed to dealing with the problems in their lives This is what he said We just played Singapore for the first time <clears throat> And like the day before we played, we got there, you know, a couple days early, I guess, do some press or whatever and Day, the night before we played, we found out the government came in and said, okay, here's five songs, you can't play these songs. And I thought to myself, how oppressed is your country when you're scared of music and you think by us playing this song, things are going to happen to your children? It just doesn't make sense to me. But even in the Western world, like in the States or whatever, you always have problems. Well, in the States, yeah, in the States, I know in California we had bus benches, we had like advertisements on bus benches, yeah. and one city had them all pulled. Uh, it, it just it blows me away because common sense to me is like, if that offends you, don't look at it. You know, maybe somebody else won't be offended. Um, and it's just ironic in this day and age, things like that can still happen. Is it still important for a band like Slayer nowadays to, to offend people? I don't even think we're trying to. <laughs> I just think, you know, we're making up music that we like and writing about subjects that we like and it just upsets people. I mean, I knew when we did Jihad that we we're going to get, yeah. that we we're going to have to answer for it. And that's okay. But, you know, all the other ones, like I didn't write Cult because I wanted to, I, I didn't write Cult because I thought you know, people are just going to say, oh, these guys are the devil, you know, I, cult is how I feel. I think religion is just a big farce and I think, I think people use it as a crutch as opposed to uh, dealing with the problems in their lives, so. Mm. I think a lot of people think that uh, Jihad is, is something like, like Angel of Death Part 2. Yeah, people, I, I knew we were going to get the exact kind of response because, you know, it's fresh. Um, people say, how could you write such a song? And realistically, it's just like reading the newspaper, but it's got music put on top of it, or underneath it. So you got music and you're reading an editorial from, you know, some Muslim country, yeah. you know. And because we didn't condemn it, just like we didn't do an angel of death, that makes us, you know, Muslim sympathizers and it's crazy. People, people got too much time on their hands to think about what Slayer's doing. <laughs> just listen to the music and have fun, you know. I think people should be allowed to make their own choice. I think people should think for themselves. I think people should listen to music because they like it, not because they're listening to it to pick things out that are wrong with it. You know, I mean, we're all, well, we're not all adults, but there are children on the planet and there are people that, you know, shouldn't even be making decisions that do. But, um, you know, I'm all about answering for what I do. You know, um, like I said about the bus benches, if you don't like music, don't listen to it. If you don't like the TV show, watch another TV show. If you don't like horror movies, go see, you know, click, go see comedy, you know. There's choices. You don't have to listen to this. It's not, it's not like when we put out a record and it's mandatory listening for everyone on the planet. It's not like that. You know, you have a choice. Discussing the importance of rhythm guitar, Slayer guitarist Kerry King shared his thoughts on Shredders, saying that their music tends to easily bore him as repetitive. He tells Total Guitar, I think a lot of the Shredder-type players, and I don't mean everybody, they're not very good songwriters. 
players like Fire Malmsteen spend their time perfecting what they do only as far as leads. Ingui had a run where he did some good songs, but when it became just about how many notes he can fit in a millisecond. King added, don't get me wrong, he's an amazing player, but after three songs, I'm done. He'll just keep doing it faster on a different string. Rhythm guitar is where a song is constructed. If there's a song you like, it's because of that rhythm guitar. The lead stuff at the end of the day is just the icing. During the rest of the chat, King discussed hanging out with friends who aren't into metal, explaining how he still likes goofing around with guitar. When people come over and want to listen to music most people like, say Michael Jackson or something, I'll go pick up the guitar and learn the one Eddie Van Halen played on. I'll do stupid shit like that, he said. There's this song called, Push It, which got used in commercials and I think it's funny to put that on when friends are over, pick up a guitar and play along. Everyone in the house just dies laughing. For clarity, you can turn that into a metal song. Discussing his involvement with Megadeth during the band's early stages, Slayer guitarist Kerry King praised frontman Dave Mustaine's guitar skills, but still said that he can't figure out how anyone put up with Dave's character enough to stay in the band. He told Loudwire, I was one of the lucky people, and there's certainly no offense against Kirk Hammett. Kirk's a wonderful friend of mine, but I was lucky enough to see Metallica with Mustaine. And I say that because it's just a rare thing to be able to say that. I saw them play with Woodstock and I was so intrigued by Mustaine because he was just ripping on guitar and looking out that way somewhere. And I can't do that to this day. So I was just blown away at his guitar playing. And to find out, I think it was through BC Rich, cause we all played BC Rich back then, I found out that Dave was inquiring if I would play. He continued, at the end of the day, I thought, this is a gigantic learning situation. And I also thought people would see me and know me from Slayer. Cause, I mean, we only went to the Bay Area, we only got up there. So I think, if people saw me, it would at least make them think, Slayer. So I had Slayer's best intentions in mind. I didn't go and say, hey, I wanna be in Megadeth. I don't know how anybody can be in Megadeth for more than a couple of hours, cause that guy's crazy. Asked if he had any bad experiences with Mustaine during his short time in the band back in 1984, King replied, he was cooler back then. I think there's been a lot of drugs and funny extracurriculars between now and then that helped shape who he is today. But it was good times back then. Playing all the venues Slayer played unjust, I don't know, playing different music. His stuff is definitely more, I wouldn't say intricate, cause we've got intricate parts too, but it's just, he writes riffs in a very different perspective than I, even after playing with him for a number of months. I'd still, I wouldn't do it. It's just not my style. In a recent interview, Slayer guitarist Kerry King was asked for his opinion of the Swedish occult rockers Ghost, who share management with Slayer and have toured with King's band in the past, he said. Dude, I love the imagery. I love it, I just hate the fucking music. I like them as people. You know, they've been on many tours with us. I just, I can't get into their music. And I tried. I wanna like them, and I can't. I got their CD from Brian Slagel from Metal Blade. It was when Gary Holt first started playing with us, and I picked up Gary. And I'm, like, Brian said this is awesome, man. So we put it in, going to practice. It wasn't awesome. It wasn't awesome for me. It wasn't awesome for Gary either. I'm, like, well, maybe the first song sucks. And we went to the next one. It's just not for me. I know Ghost is hugely popular, and I'm very happy for their popularity. And, like I said, they're the nicest guys you'll ever meet. It's just not my music. And I've tried so hard. Since then a nameless school from Ghost responded to what Kerry King said, dismissing any bad blood over Kerry King comments, he said. I don't even think that what he said was negative. He just said that he didn't like the band, that he didn't like the music. And you know, we're not for everybody. We've never tried to please everybody, so I didn't even see the negative element in what he said. It doesn't change my opinion on Slayer. I've been a Slayer fan ever since I was a kid, and I still love several of their records with all my heart. For me, it wasn't changing anything. 
In a recent interview, Slayer guitarist Kerry King was asked for his opinion of the Swedish occult rockers Ghost, who share management with Slayer and have toured with King's band in the past, he said. Dude, I love the imagery. I love it, I just hate the fucking music. I like them as people. You know, they've been on many tours with us. I just, I can't get into their music. And I tried. I wanna like them, and I can't. I got their CD from Brian Slagel from Metal Blade. It was when Gary Holt first started playing with us, and I picked up Gary. And I'm, like, Brian said this is awesome, man. So we put it in, going to practice. It wasn't awesome. It wasn't awesome for me. It wasn't awesome for Gary either. I'm, like, well, maybe the first song sucks. And we went to the next one. It's just not for me. I know Ghost is hugely popular, and I'm very happy for their popularity. And, like I said, they're the nicest guys you'll ever meet. It's just not my music. And I've tried so hard. Since then a nameless school from Ghost responded to what Kerry King said, dismissing any bad blood over Kerry King comments, he said. I don't even think that what he said was negative. He just said that he didn't like the band, that he didn't like the music. And you know, we're not for everybody. We've never tried to please everybody, so I didn't even see the negative element in what he said. It doesn't change my opinion on Slayer. I've been a Slayer fan ever since I was a kid, and I still love several of their records with all my heart. For me, it wasn't changing anything, 